Hi, I'm Dr. Meredith Warner, founder of Well Theory, which is a line of natural medicines and supplements designed to empower you with your health and make you live your better life. I wanted to clear up some issues with omega-3 and talk about that in particular today. Here is our omega-3, which is actually a part of this, which I designed for a few different reasons, which I'll get into in other discussions. But today I'm gonna to talk about the main component of the nervous system multi, which is my omega-3. Omega-3 is important for a number of reasons. It's hugely anti-inflammatory and it's very, very important for cell membrane function, okay? What do I mean by cell membrane function? <clears throat> well, all of the cells in the human body, uh, the only reason they can exist as their own entity, a cell, and do their own individual functions is because they have a wall around them. They have a membrane. And the membrane has different pores in it that let certain little proteins come in and out. They have a membrane potential. They have like an electrical gradient. Um, and so different ions will go in and out and give it a positive or negative charge. And then it's got receptors. So for instance, everybody's heard about CBD. That'll attach to the CB2 um, receptor change the receptor configuration, activity will happen at the membrane level, and then cell functions happen. Well, <clears throat> something that nobody really talks about, but is hugely important to how you uh, function as a human being, is the quality of the cell membrane, because that's where really all these transactions happen, uh, where signals get to the nucleus, the DNA is triggered, the DNA makes certain things based on how the genes are triggered, proteins are made, and then they get uh, effluxed out of the cell. Omega-3, is important because it improves the health and the flexibility and the functionality of your cell membranes. So most of us are too high in omega-6 and that's something that's happened to Americans really since the deregulation of the food industry some time ago and sort of corn fed animals and corn oils and things like that became more predominant in our diets. And so our O6 to O3 ratio increased historically like I'm talking way back in like biblical times or prehistoric, um, <clears throat> the ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s was more like one to one, even almost higher on the omega-3 side. And now we're like 20 to one omega-6 to omega-3, which is terrible, which is one of the reasons we all are so unhealthy in this country. So how do you increase your omega-3 and why would you wanna increase your omega-3? Well, what happens is the cell membranes incorporate these different polyunsaturated fatty acids. So the cell membranes are a lipid bilayer, lipid being the main component of the cell wall. And those lipids are either gonna be saturated, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, so on and so forth. Well, the PUFAs or the polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFA, uh, that's your omega-3s, your omega-6s. The problem with omega-6s is, is they're stiff and they don't let the membrane be flexible and they don't let the pores function correctly, the receptors don't function correctly, and the whole outcome of the cell's um, ability to do what you need it to do on a day-to-day -day basis is depleted. If you add omega-3 to your diet, you effectively make your cell membranes work better, which means your cells work better to include your mitochondria, which is really the core of most of what we call non-communicable diseases or NCDs <clears throat> is, comes from poor mitochondrial health and poor cell function. A lot of that has to do with the membrane quality. So omega-3, one of the main functions, one of the main reasons it's important is it increases membrane flexibility and membrane um, structural integrity and functionality. The second reason, and maybe even more important reason omega-3 is important, is because pieces of omega-3 will go into what's called the arachidonic acid or the inflammatory pathway. Now omega-6 does this too. Here's the problem. <clears throat> they both go to like the arachidonic acid. So EPA, which you've heard of EPA, DHA, EPA is one of the omega-3s. That'll pass into this pathway and so will the omega-6 byproducts, right? And then they get metabolized by the COX enzymes, COX-1 and 2. You've heard of Celebrex, you probably heard of Vioxx back in the day. Those medicines work by blocking the COX-1 and COX-2, uh, well, Celebrex case only blocks the one, but um, <clears throat> I mean, one of the coxes. Uh, basically, the anti-inflammatories work by blocking different pieces of this pathway. So steroids stop it way back at the phospholipase A2 section, like way back at the beginning of the stage. The Celebrex is somewhere in the middle and then the ibuprofen is somewhere along that continuum as well. That's how the synthetic anti-inflammatories work and like tart cherry works almost like Celebrex and it'll actually block a cox too. But the way that omega-3 helps you in this pathway is it'll actually give 
pieces of itself, EPA in particular, that'll pass through this pathway and instead of becoming pro-inflammatory and attacking molecules, they actually become what we call now, and all of this is new knowledge, protectins and resolvins and different anti-inflammatory molecules or cytokines. So it's a friendlier pathway. It's a more balanced pathway and you don't self-attack. The problem with having cell membranes filled to the brim with O6s or omega-6s and not enough O3s is that not only is your membrane stiff and dysfunctional as we discussed, but all of your inflammatory pathway goes into the attack mode. <clears throat> now this is great when you're first fighting off a virus or first fighting off bacteria, or like you get a cut or an injury and you got a bunch of dead cells that need to be cleaned up and you gotta start the healing pathway. Problem is if you only have a bunch of O6, you never leave that highly inflamed state. And then the cytokines and the molecules begin to actually attack good cells and good proteins. And so this is where autoimmune disorders and um, you know, hyperimmunology or cytokine storms, all of that happens down that pathway. So what you need as a human being to be optimally functional is a balance, just like everything else in our lives. Can't be too hot, can't be too cold. You can't drink too much water, you can't drink too little water. You can't eat too little, you shouldn't eat too much. You gotta be Goldilocks, get it just right. So you have to have a good omega-3 to omega-6 ratio to be optimally healthy because you need a flexible membrane, you need a membrane that works well, and you need the bits and pieces of the PUFA that is omega-3 to pass in to the inflammatory pathway that is more protective and less self-attacking to yourself. And this is why omega-3 is so awesome. So think of the cell membrane as sort of a uh, just-in-time inventory, on-demand inventory source. Your body makes inflammatory mediators as it's needed. So like you encounter a virus, you encounter bacteria, you get cut, all that. All of this goes into play right then and there and does what it does but you don't wanna stay in that omega-6 pro-inflammatory pathway where you begin to attack yourself and you have hyper-inflammation. Remember, we've talked about this before in other um, educational series. The source of most problems, and again, this comes down to the mitochondria, is too much inflammation, too much low-grade chronic inflammation specifically, and then too much oxidative stress. And so omega-3 can counteract that state of being and make you less inflamed, which in turn creates less oxidative stress. So it's super important to get in enough omega-3. Now this particular omega-3 has actually got a pretty good ratio of DHA to EPA, most are the opposite. The difference between DHA and EPA is that the DHA has to do with more of the structure of the membrane as we discussed, and also um, DHA is especially important in the brain. So for your cell membranes in the brain and in the nervous system, DHA is hugely important. EPA, like I talked about, is the building block or the just-in-time inventory for the protectin resolvin inflammatory pathway that protects you from attacking yourself after you've cleaned up what you need to do for injury and infection. So hopefully this all makes sense. Um, <clears throat> the nervous system multi I made specifically with higher DHA ratios than most of these omega-3s have for that brain protective function, but it does have a good amount of omega-3 in general with the EPA and DHA that you need. Um, in terms of prescription strength omega-3, I mean, if you've got high triglycerides, your doctor might prescribe you four grams a day of this stuff because that's where the studies show an effective change in your triglyceride and cholesterol levels. That's another reason omega-3s are awesome. They will affect your lipid profile beneficially um, over time. I take 1,500 milligrams a day. I'm healthy, I don't have any cholesterol issues, but I don't want to, and I don't want to have oxidized LDL floating around in my bloodstream, and I certainly don't want my brain to degenerate. So I take this sort of as a wellness prophylaxis um, personal health um, item for myself. But if you have actual problems with your cholesterol levels, talk to your physician and they may want to actually prescribe some super high dose omega-3s. Uh, but for general wellness, you don't need four grams a day. Um, so the basic things about omega-3 that you need to remember, cell membrane integrity, cell membrane flexibility, and protectin resolving inflammatory pathway or a balanced inflammatory response to injury and disease. That's why it's important. Um, hopefully that cleared it up for you.